Hello once again everyone, this is Jason Carr, the developer of LaunchBox. Uh, new in version 3.2 of LaunchBox is uh, a much easier way to install MS-DOS games. Um, I have a previous video out there uh, that shows you how to manually install DOS games and the process isn't exactly cut and dry, so uh, a priority I had was to make uh, an MS-DOS installer wizard that was as easy as we could possibly make it. So that's what I set out to do and that's been released here and new in version 3.2 which just came out recently is this installer, this install DOS game wizard which is under the tools menu. So what we're going to do today is we're going to walk through that installation process and we're going to go ahead and install a game from a physical CD. I have a game called Fable in my drive. Uh, Fable came out in 1996, and it was the original Fable um, that the reboot, the whole Fable 1, 2, and 3 modern games um, were a reboot of this original 1996 Fable video game. So we're going to go through the process to go ahead and get that installed uh, to hopefully show you guys all the steps and show, show everybody what's required. Uh, now with this new uh, wizard to install from a physical CD. So let's go ahead and go up to Tools, Install DOS Game, and it'll take you to a nice little welcome screen here. And the first step is simply to go and type in the name of your game, which is Fable. So we'll go ahead and hit Next. And then the first question it asks you is whether your game is already installed. Now, if you have a physical CD, obviously the game isn't installed. It's on the installation files are on your CD. Same thing if you have uh, an ISO file or a folder of installation files. Obviously you're going to select no. I have the installation files or media for my game. But oftentimes uh, with old DOS games you end up with just a folder of the actual game files um, that are already installed. Uh, so in that case you would select, yes, my game is already installed into a folder. But here we have the actual physical CD, so I'm going to say, no, I have the installation files or media for my game. And then it asks me, where are your installation files? Well, in this situation, they're on a physical CD, so that's obvious. Uh, if you have a CD image, you're going to select CD image. Or if you have them in just a simple folder on your hard drive, you're going to select folder on your hard drive. But we'll select physical CD here. Then it's going to ask you what drive uh, the physical disk is in and we have it right here I only have one drive in my system so it comes up as drive E Fable American and we'll hit next then it's gonna ask us to browse for the installer file now nine times out of ten it's going to guess correctly what the installer file is uh, but occasionally uh, there will be a game that isn't called where, where the installer isn't called install.exe or the installer is located in a subfolder on the on your uh, ins installation disk. Uh, I think that's pretty rare, um, but occasionally you will have to manually populate this yourself. Um, but nine times out of ten, your game will have install.exe on in the in the root folder on the CD, and it should automatically just work. But if you have to go ahead and browse for your installation file, in other words, if it comes up blank, you'll have to manually browse and it'll take you to a list of uh, applications on the CD, folders and applications on the CD. Uh, obviously, what you're gonna look for is something that's similar to install. Every once in a while, it's it's something similar to setup. I've seen games, a DOS game installer called, DOS game installers called uh, INST DOS before. Um, there's there's other various things that, that uh, can come up for the installer. But generally, you're just going to look for something that resembles install here and select that file if it doesn't automatically populate for you. So here we have install.exe, and we'll hit next. And then we're going to browse for the destination folder. Now, this is nice because LaunchBox will automatically give you a, a folder inside your LaunchBox folder for the game. Uh, and it'll automatically create this folder for you. So if you want to keep your collection organized, you don't even have to worry about it. You can just leave this at the default. Um, it puts it in games, DOS, and then the name of your game inside your LaunchBox folder. But if you happen to want to install it to a different location, you can go ahead and select that location here. 
but we'll go ahead and hit next because we just want to install it to the default location. And the next question asks whether you want to mount the CD when you run your game. Now, nine times out of 10, DOS games will require the CD in the drive when you run the game. So most likely you're gonna click yes, automatically mount the CD. Um, and it certainly won't hurt anything to just go ahead and hit yes, automatically mount the CD. But if you happen to know that your DOS game does not require the CD in the drive, you can hit no here. But we'll go ahead and hit yes, because Fable, yes, it does require the CD in the drive. And then the next question asks whether you want to copy the CD to the destination folder. This is convenient because this will allow you to run the game without the physical CD in the drive anymore um, after we copy the CD to your hard drive. This creates a um, what's called a bin Q file that basically is a copy of the CD in a file that um, it, that DOSBox will use instead of the physical CD, which is really convenient uh, because then you don't have to have the CD in the drive and you can run any number of games this way without having to pop disks in and out of your drive. So that's really nice. Um, just a quick note, we use a binq file and not an ISO file, which is more common uh, because a lot of DOS games will actually have the music as physical tracks on the CD. In other words, uh, it's a music CD. Um, there's a data track and then a bunch of music tracks on the CD, just like a standard music CD. So because of that, a bin Q will allow us to copy those files over or those tracks over too, so that you have music in the game. Otherwise, if we use a standard ISO, uh, you wouldn't be able to hear music in the game. So just a quick note there. We'll go ahead and click yes to copy to the destination folder. And what this will do is start an application that's included with LaunchBox called CDRDAO. Uh, and CDRDAO is an open source application. Um, thank goodness for open source. I love open source. Um, it uh, is freely available and will just rip the CD to the bin and queue files. So rather than me having to uh, reinvent the wheel and program my own uh, ripping application, which trust me would not be quick and would not be fun, um, I'm able to include CDRDAO in LaunchBox and, and it'll do it all for me here. Now this will take uh, a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and I'll pick it back up um, when the, the ripping process is finished. Alright, so the ripping process is just about done here. Um, and we can continue with the video. One thing I do need to note though about that ripping process. Um, I'm not sure how common it is with DOS games. I don't think it's really that common, but there are uh, games with copy protect protection mechanisms on the, on the disks. And obviously games that have copy protection mechanisms, won't you won't be able to copy them to disk likely. Um, and, it, and so that process will probably fail and it'll report you an error message. Um, so if that's the case, unfortunately, you won't be able to copy the disk to a CD, but you should still be able to run the application uh, in DOSBox uh, just by having the physical CD in the drive. But it's worth trying. Um, most often that process will work. So go ahead and give it a shot. And if it just happens not to work, you can go back, uh, just use the back button in the wizard and select to not copy the files or not copy the CD to your to your hard drive, and then you can continue uh, as normal. Um, it's always worth trying that first to not have to have the CD in the drive. All right, so now we're ready to perform the installation in DOSBox. So the next step is actually to load up DOS in DOSBox and run the actual MS-DOS installation process. And that will actually be all automated for you, and all you need to do is run the actual installer inside of DOSBox. So we'll go ahead and hit next. <clears throat> and here it comes up with the actual MS-DOS installation program for Fable. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll do a maximum installation, all 28 megabytes. Now it comes up with the installation path. Um, most DOS installers for games will ask you where to install the game but they all will default to a location on drive C. 
Uh, now drive C is where we've mounted the destination folder uh, in DOSBox. So you really don't need to worry about where it puts it so long as it, it ends up on drive C. And the installers will almost always install to drive C by default. So you don't really need to worry about it. Just leave it at the default and hit OK when it asks you where you want to install the game. And then typically next in the installation process or somewhere in the installation process is the um, the sound setup process. Most often this is automatic. So we'll go ahead and uh, just auto detect it. And it will come out come up with Sound Blaster Auth32 or Sound Blaster 16, uh, DMA1, IRQ7, port 220, which is the standard DOS box settings. Um, so that should just work fine. It should detect it without a problem. We can go ahead and hit test. And it'll play our music here. So we know our sound is working. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK. And OK. And that's the installation process. Uh, no, we don't want to register. And there it is. So we can press any key to continue. And it will take us back to the wizard. Then it asks us whether the installation process completed successfully. So obviously in this case, yes, it completed successfully. We ran the, the installation process from, from start to finish and didn't get any errors, didn't have any problems. Um, so we know it completed successfully and we can hit yes and, and it completed successfully. If by chance you did something wrong to, during the install or it didn't work right, something wasn't, wasn't right, you can hit no, the installation did not complete successfully and it'll take you back and you can go rerun the process if you need to. Uh, but in this case, yes, it worked just fine. So we'll go ahead and hit yes. And uh, now it's going to ask for ask you to browse for the game startup file. And now what this does, obviously, uh, Launchbox needs to know what get, what file to start, uh, what to, in order to start the game. And it's going to take a best guess here, as far as what that file is. Uh, and most often, it will get it right. Uh, but it is a good idea to confirm that what it has here is the actual startup for the game. I mean, this is in this situation, it's it's silly. It, it's really simple. It's Fable, Fable, Fable.exe, which is obviously the right application. There are some games which have many um, executable files in the uh, application folder after the install. And sometimes on that previous screen where it said press any key to continue after the installation, the MS-DOS installation process is complete, some games will tell you, okay, you need to run, you need to type this command to run the application. Um, if it does that, then you can confirm that what it has here is the correct file. Um, and you can hit browse and take a look at actually what's in the folder to check what 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 it is to run. Now in this situation, uh, it's never DOS 4GW. Uh, that's included with a lot of games, but that's never the right, the right file to choose. Obviously, it's not set up to run the game that you need here. It's gonna be Fable. Um, so we'll go ahead and match that up. But if you, if you take note of what it tells you to run, if it does happen to tell you to run uh, a particular application, you can select that application here. Um, if you happen to have the game installation manual, uh, you, I'm sure that the manual always tells you which file to run as well there. So you'll, but nine times out of 10, it's gonna get it right uh, anyways, and you won't need to worry about it. But just, just a quick note, you, you might want to confirm that it is the correct, the correct file because there are some games that have you know 10 different executable files that are installed into the, into the application folder and you need to choose which one is the correct file. Uh, but usually it's just automatically correct. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And then it tells us that the installation wizard is complete. So our game is installed, there were no problems and everything is, is ready to go. So we'll go ahead and hit finish. And it's going to just, just take you to the standard edit game dialog for uh, for games in LaunchBox. And we take you here just so that you can populate metadata, search the gamesdb.net. So we'll go ahead and search and find Fable for PC from 1996, which is the correct game. And we'll go ahead and download images for it as well. There it is. Hit OK. And there's our game. So the game is installed. We're all set and ready to go. We'll go ahead and give it a test. And there's our game. Let's 
skip the intro videos here. And here's our menu for the game, and the game will work just fine. Uh, but we'll go ahead and quit it for now. And we're back to LaunchBox. So that's the basic installation process for installing from a physical CD, installing from an ISO or an installation folder, or installing from an already installed game, adding an already installed game to LaunchBox. Uh, all of those are super easy with the new wizard. So uh, one thing to note here before we, before we end the video though, I'll go back into the wizard and it says, if you encounter any issues with this wizard, please report the issue on the LaunchBox forums. Now, obviously, uh, getting this wizard to work for every single DOS game that was ever made is not an easy task. It's quite a complicated, difficult thing to do. Um, and I've tested as many games as I can possibly get my hands on, I've been ordering games off of eBay and everything else, uh, to try and improve the compatibility of this uh, wizard as, as much as I possibly can. But obviously, I can't cover the thousands of DOS games that, that, were, that have existed over time. So please let us know if you run into an issue uh, where a game doesn't work with the with a wizard or the, or the installation wizard isn't working on your system or anything, please do click that link um, and it'll take you to the LaunchBox forums where you can post um, and let us know that a game isn't working so that we can fix the issue because that's what we want to do. The goal here with this wizard and with LaunchBox in general is just to make things as easy as possible so that anybody can do it. Uh, and that's that's really what we're trying to do just in general. Uh, so let us know if you run into something that doesn't works, work and we can uh, fix it so that you can actually use your game in LaunchBox, but also so that other people uh, can come along and not have the problem that you ran into. So please do let us know on the forums, uh, specifically on that particular post, if you run into an issue with a game. But I think that's it. Uh, remember to subscribe to this channel and like this video um, if you are interested in more videos on LaunchBox. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.